JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, Montego Bay businessman charged in cocaine bust. The police have charged a St. James businessman in connection with a drug bust that occurred on the flank of Main Road in the parish last week. According to the police, 59-year-old Hugh Fraser is scheduled to appear in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday, February 10, to answer to the charges of possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, and trafficking cocaine. The police report that on Friday, January 29, officers arrested Fraser about 7.15 p.m. during anti-narcotics operations along the flank of Main Road in the parish. Fraser was reportedly driving a Hyundai motor car and was signaled to stop. He complied and the occupants along the vehicle were searched and 11 packages of compressed cocaine, weighing about 11 kilograms, were found. The police said the drug has an estimated street value of over $80 million. Man allegedly used gun to threaten woman charged with assault. 24-year-old Rory Smith of Big Bridge, Savlamar in Westmoreland, is now facing several charges after he allegedly pulled a gun and threatened to kill a woman during a dispute in the parish on Sunday. Smith has been charged with assault at common law and illegal possession of firearm. According to the police, the accused was at the complainant's home when they got into an argument. Smith allegedly pulled a firearm and pointed it at the complainant and threatened to kill her. The incident happened about 1.30 p.m. The police said the complainant left the house and made a report. Smith was later arrested and charged after he was pointed out by the complainant on an identification parade, the police said. His court date is being finalized. January 2021 murders on par with previous years, says Chang. Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, says the murders committed over the month of January does not indicate a spike in homicides year over year. The minister said the trend remains fairly flat when we compare January 1 to 31, 2021, 131 murders, to January 1 to 31, 2020, 120 murders. In January 2019, there were 149 murders. These statistics of January 2021 are deeply concerning, but they do not indicate a spike, Dr. Chang said. The minister was speaking in yesterday's sitting of the House of Representatives, during which he extended condolences to the loved ones of Andrew Lou Garwood, who was murdered during a church service on Sunday. Four people, including the suspected shooter, have been arrested since that incident. I wish to publicly express my heartfelt condolences to the loved ones of Mrs. Lou Garwood for their loss, and in particular, her church family at the Agape Christian Fellowship Church. May your faith in God give you solace during this difficult time, Dr. Chang said. This barbaric shooting on Sunday unfortunately reflects an increasing number of homicides perpetrated by killers who are hired by family members, he added. He noted, however, that the 2019 report of the Jamaica National Crime Victimization Survey indicated that 70.1% of people on average felt safe walking alone in their community at night and approximately 90% felt safe in their homes. The minister added, that since 2018, the country has been on a fairly stable path. However, he said in the face of January's crime statistics, the government is even more driven to pursue Plan Secure Jamaica. Plan Secure Jamaica is the most coordinated, inclusive, and enduring security program that has ever been introduced in Jamaica. It is geared towards creating a safe, secure, cohesive, and just society, thereby setting a key condition for increased and sustained growth and prosperity, Dr. Chang told the House. He noted that in furtherance of this goal, the efforts are centered around 10 strategic focal areas and supported by six strategic objectives which he said the government has delivered on. These include 1. Strengthening the national security architecture 2. Strengthening the criminal justice system 3. Enhancing youth and community development. 4. Protecting and securing borders, maritime space, and key sectors of the economy. 5. Strengthening national integrity systems. and 6. Increasing and sustaining public support for law enforcement and public order. 
The minister said the projected cost for implementing the plan Secure Jamaica is $176 billion or US $1.2 billion over the first seven years, starting in financial year 2016 to 2017 to financial year 2022 to 2023. <laughs> by cops to tackle kingston crime wave the jamaican police force will in weeks roll out a crack motorcycle unit aimed at stemming the tide of blood that has stained kingston streets amid an upsurge in gang violence the imminent deployment is expected to mirror the quick response police team that was commissioned in 2019 to curtail crime in the western city of Montego Bay, a template the Commission of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, hopes will reap similar rewards. They'll be trained in the tactical use of motorcycles and their weapons to respond quickly to gang activities and other threats to the lower part of Kingston, Anderson said at a virtual press conference on Monday. Tension is mounting in the Kingston Western Police Division with close to 20 murders in January alone. In the wake of Sunday's killing of a reputed crony of drug kingpin Christopher Dodoskoke, the fatal shooting triggered an almost immediate reprisal within 15 minutes on West Street. The state owned Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, deployed additional buses to ferry commuters on Monday evening amid anxiety that the blowback against the death could lead to more flare ups. Anderson said that he had met with divisional heads to assess the possible outcomes of that killing, including whether more bloodletting could follow. Immediately put in a response to separate these criminal gangs using other assets that are not assigned there, but we use them in a more fluid way to interrupt, the police commissioner said. Anderson's bikers will also have to tackle gang violence further east in Dunkirk and will eventually fan out to the northern arc of Kingston and St. Andrew. These are some serious times, was the ominous warning being sung on Monday by an elderly resident of the community following the brutal murder of a mother who chastised gunmen for wounding her daughter moments earlier. The woman, 49-year-old Angelita McPherson of Margaret Street, Kingston 16, was shot and killed along Wild Street on Sunday. Her daughter, whose name will not be mentioned because of security concerns, is battling for life in hospital after she was shot repeatedly. Reports from the Elliston Road Police found that about 12.50 p.m., McPherson was walking along the roadway when she was attacked by three men who opened fire at her. She was pronounced dead at hospital. On Monday, Dunkirk's streets were generally empty and many businesses closed. Them make after her three times already. I see it now. Them shoot up her daughter. And the woman go around, they go talk and them do her bad, a resident said. 119 people were murdered in January 2021, three more than the comparative period last year. Education Ministry receives tablets and laptops from the U.S. The United States has reinforced its commitment to education and development in Jamaica by donating 300 tablets and 10 laptops to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for distribution to students in need through the One Laptop or Tablet per Child initiative. The devices were formally handed over by the Charge Affairs, United States Embassy in Jamaica, John McIntyre yesterday at the offices of the ministry at Hero Circle in Kingston. Some 300 students in grades 4, 5, and 6 from 10 primary schools will benefit as they prepare to sit the primary exit profile PEP examination. The 10 schools that stand to benefit are Trenchtown Primary, Hope Valley Experimental, Homestead Primary, Gregory Park Primary, Green Pond Primary, Granville Primary, Negril Primary, Sandy Bay Primary, Lucy Primary, and Maypen Primary. Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Favel Williams, thanked the U.S. for the donation. On behalf of the students, the beneficiary schools, and the students within those schools, I would like to say a big thank you for hearing our appeal under the One Laptop or Tablet Per Child Initiative and coming on board to help us, Williams said. The education sector across the world has been severely impacted by COVID-19. Jamaica, like any other country, 
has had to school its children from home remotely. And so we had to get into motion real quickly to ensure that our students have devices and that they have connectivity, she added. For his part, McIntyre said the U.S. chose to make this donation to bolster the government of Jamaica's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes activities that aid in the adaptation of virtual learning, especially for students with limited access, he said. Today's assistance builds on U.S. investments in Jamaica of nearly U.S. $690 million of the past 20 years. Our donation of 300 tablets and 10 laptops is part of the more than U.S. $4 million that the United States has provided to Jamaica to counter COVID-19, he added. McIntyre also emphasized that the donation brings the number of tablet and laptop devices donated by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, to the one laptop or tablet per child initiative to approximately 2,000. In December, the USAID handed over tablets to the Child Protection and Family Services Agency to support children in state care and another 150 tablets to assist vulnerable community college students. Jamaica surpassed 16,000 COVID-19 cases. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the island surpassed 16,000 yesterday after 100 new cases were recorded by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The new cases bring the total number of cases recorded to 16,073, of which the ministry said 3,399 are active. The country also recorded two additional virus-related deaths, a 41-year-old man from St. Elizabeth and a 49-year-old woman from Hanover, bringing the island death toll to 355. Of the 100 newly reported virus cases, there were 37 males and 63 females, with ages ranging from 5 months to 94 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 34, Manchester 28, St. Catherine 18, Clarendon 10, Trelawney, St. Thomas, St. Mary, Portland 2 each, St. Elizabeth and St. James 1 each. The country also recorded 29 recoveries, bringing the total number to 12,137. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.